Here we go, you guys. Woo, this is fun. I'm having so much fun. All right, next, next, next. I just had to double check to make sure that they were there. So you're gonna really love these next two speakers. There's been, they've been really great troopers to do these talks because I really did talk them into doing this. This is a peek into the world of the GSOW project, Girl of Skepticism on Wikipedia. One person is a newbie and the other one is someone who's had a couple of years experience. So this should be a lot of fun to, to listen to it from their perspective. I don't know what they're gonna say. So I'm not gonna go too much into the detail because I don't wanna repeat anything that's in their talks, but, um, uh, Kelly has just graduated from GSOW training. She's a, a great talent. I've seen a lot of Kelly because she plays on our trivia game on Thursday nights, which you guys are all invited to as well if you want to play. It's social trivia. It's more about social than trivia. That's kind of fun, but uh, she's been helping out with Richard Saunders' Australian Prediction Project, which we work on every Tuesday. And she joined GSOW because she said she wanted to be more involved in the skeptical movement. And um, I'm really glad that she wrote to me. So we're going to have uh, first Kelly and then Monica and their talk should go one to the other. And I hope that'll work out well. That's the way I planned it at least. So let, let's see how that works. Let me pin. Where are you, Kelly? I have to. I'm here. I don't know if that helps, but I'm here. Okay, there you are. I see you. Okay, let me spotlight you. There she is. I talked her into this, you guys, and she had to come all the way from the galaxy very far, far away to be able to do this talk, as you can see. Yeah. So I decided that this background was more interesting than the wall behind me. So, <laughs> so I'm going to um, spotlight you. You do have slides. Um, you do have um, anything with, with audio? I'll, I'll be screen sharing a little bit, but I don't have slides, which okay. I'm immediately regretting because now I have to look at my own face. Oh, <laughs> that's all right. Okay, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go away. You have fun. All right, thank you. All right, uh, hi everybody. My name is Kelly Burke and I am a brand new editor for Gorilla Skepticism on Wikipedia or GSOW. And I'm just gonna explain a little bit about what GSOW is about, my experience with the whole training process and some of the stuff that I've been doing recently. Um, so basically you're just getting a 20 minute, actually 40 minute plug for GSOW between my talk and Monica's. Um, so I know most of you already know Susan and you've heard a lot about GSOW from some of our other speakers or from Susan herself. Um, but for those of you who aren't familiar, uh, GSOW is a group of skeptical Wikipedia editors. So we create or edit pages for skeptics, uh, skeptical topics, scientific topics, which may not sound like the most exciting thing, but I can't overstate how important it is. Um, Wikipedia is the biggest source of information in the world. Just think about how often you look to Wikipedia. And even when you don't specifically go to Wikipedia, you might still be getting your information from Wikipedia. So just as an example, I'm gonna quickly share my screen. Somebody throw out something that you've Googled in the last week. You can say it in the chat or just unmute yourself. And I'm gonna hope that you don't say one of the exceptions. Virginia Hall. All right. So we're going to Google Virginia Hall. Thanks, Linda. And whenever you Google something, more often than not, you're going to see this nice little info box on the side with the information directly taken from the beginning of their Wikipedia page. Uh, so even when you're not specifically going to Wikipedia for your information, you're probably still getting your information from Wikipedia. So I'm going to talk a little bit about what my experience was like and then go into some of the things that we've worked on, but I'm really going to focus on the whole training process uh, because I think GSOW is really important and you should all join us. Um, as I'm sure your middle school teachers have told you, anybody can edit Wikipedia. So if you wanted to right now, you could go on and edit a page, but there are some things that doing it with GSOW uh, some benefits to doing it with G GSOW instead of just doing it by yourself. Um, first of all, we have a thorough training process. Um, so you get to benefit from the experience of all of our other GSOW editors. Um, and most of my talk's gonna be about this training process. So I can hopefully make it a little less intimidating. Uh, we also have our secret cabal on Facebook where we can talk about pages that need work, uh, ask for feedback, share the pages that we've worked on. So it's a really great 
community for collaboration that you wouldn't be able to get just editing Wikipedia by yourself. Um, and the other nice thing is everybody, while we have a skeptical focus, everybody ha has their individual focuses within skepticism. So some people are working on pages for psychics or alternative medicine or vaccines and anti-vax, which has become really important lately. So I know some of you are thinking that sounds great and I'd love to do it, but I don't have the time or expertise, but my job for today is to convince you that you do have the time and you don't need the expertise. I certainly don't have any expertise. Uh, that's something I was a little worried about getting into skeptical activism as I was looking for it, because I'm one of those people who kind of knows a little bit about a lot of things, um, but I don't have a lot of in-depth knowledge on anything in particular. But the nice thing is that Wikipedia relies primarily on secondary sources. So you don't need to be able to read a complex scientific study or a dense legal document. You're just looking for those articles that have already interpreted them for you and using that to uh, support your information on a Wikipedia page. So my introduction into skepticism, as I'm sure happened for many of you, is somebody recommended Skeptics Guides to the Universe. And after listening, I suddenly realized that skepticism was a thing and consumed as much skeptical content as I could. So listened to all of the podcasts, watched tons of talks on YouTube, um, and read as much as I could. But I, while in the back of my mind, I was like, I should be more active and do something about it. I had that same thought of, I don't really have a lot of time. So I didn't think much about it. And then COVID hit. Um, then everything kind of came together. I suddenly had tons of time on my hands because my second job was on hold and my weekend plans were all canceled. Um, and then on top of that, I saw all of the really dangerous pseudoscience and misinformation that was literally killing people. Um, so I decided that I needed to do something about it. Um, and I asked around and somebody on the SGU Discord server told me about GSOW and I reached out to Susan, which you should all do after this. Um, so she sent me a pre-training assignment, which took maybe an hour or two, um, and then I was officially added to the secret cabal, and I was part of GSOW. Um, so the training can be done at your own pace. It's basically a checklist of assignments, and each of the assignments by themselves can be done in one sitting, and you just check them off as you go. Um, and it puts everything into little bite-sized pieces, but it'll teach you how to cite a source, create an info box, add pictures to a page, add links, basically just everything you need to know to be able to edit. And one of the, what I think is one of the more important things in training, I'm gonna delve into a little bit further, and that's what we call backwards edits. So if you think about writing a Wikipedia page, you would start with the page you wanted to write and look for sources, but backwards edit is the opposite. So you start with a source that you think has good information and you put it into a relevant Wikipedia page. And I really want to emphasize this because I think this is a great way that you can make a difference even if you don't have a lot of time because you don't even need to seek out information. It could just be, I read this really great article. Let's see if there's a Wikipedia page that could benefit from this information. So I'm going to show you a couple of the backwards edits that I did during my training. Quick screen share. Um, so the first one was on this really awesome interview uh, with Andrian that Rob Palmer did, and I know he's here and you get to hear him later. Um, so I read the interview and I was, oops, sorry. Everything on Zoom gets in the way. Um, I was able to take some of the information from the interview and put it into the page for Cosmos Possible Worlds. Um, it wasn't a lot of information that I added, but I felt like it really improved the page. I was able to put a really great quote from her in there um, and add just a little bit more information that Rob was able to get from Anne and show things from her perspective. Um, so again, didn't take a lot of time. All I had to do is read the article, pull out some information and a quote, and I was basically done. Another backwards edit that I did during my training was for We Believe in Dinosaurs. Um, so We Believe in Dinosaurs was a documentary about Ken Ham's Ark Encounter Museum in Kentucky, um, and it talked about some of the controversy, and on the Point of Inquiry podcast, they interviewed the director and one of the scientists who was featured in the documentary, 
So I just listened to that podcast and pulled some information from the podcast to include on the Wikipedia page. And fun story, because Wikipedia rabbit holes are awesome. I actually ended up when I was, you know, creating this edit, I added in a lot of these links and I added in the Center for Inquiry link. And because I was adding in that link, just browsed the page and found out that the Center for Inquiry has a master's program that they created with the University of Buffalo in science and the public. So now I'm enrolled in that master's program. So you never know where Wikipedia is going to take you. Um, and actually another fun story about this page, as Monica and I were discussing our talks, I told her that um, you know, I was gonna bring up my backwards edit that I did on this page. And she was the one who originally wrote this page. Uh, so I'm glad I was able to contribute some content for her. All right, let me pause my share for a minute. So those were my backwards edits. And then the last major part of my training that I had left was the final project. And we have a nice long list of pages to choose from that need to be rewritten. Uh, a lot are about scientists or science topics or skeptical topics, but I found that list really intimidating. So I just messaged Susan um, and she threw out some ideas that she thought would be interesting for me. Um, and I decided on Julia Bellis, who is a science journalist for, Bop, for Vox. Um, and she's covered a bunch of health topics, alternative medicine, some woo peddlers, and we thought that she deserved a decent Wikipedia page. Uh, I think my final project ended up taking about a week, but honestly, it probably could have gone a bit faster, except that I went down the rabbit hole of trying to read everything she'd ever written, because she's awesome, and I recommend reading her stuff. Um, but when I was done, I was a full-fledged GSOW editor, and I'll just share and show you the page that I ended up with. So this is the page that I made for her. It wasn't anything, you know, huge or crazy intimidating, but it would provide anybody who's looking into her with some great information about her. Um, and since I edited this page back in August, I believe, there have been 1,128 views. Uh, so way more eyes than I would have reached otherwise. So that was the entire training process. Um, the last thing I want to go into is some of the work that we're doing now. So with the COVID vaccine rolling out, anti-vaxxers are out in full force. And so we've been focusing lately on making sure that all of the pages related to vaccines are well-written and accurate so that when people are looking for information, we know that they're getting good information. Uh, so one of the pages that I worked on was on the International Certificate of Vaccination or Prophylaxis, uh, also known as a yellow card. And for that page, I got to work with our one of our veteran editors, Leon, who I can see is here right now. I see you just messaged in the chat. Um, and that was, you know, one of the really cool things about GSOW is you're not alone. You get to collaborate with really awesome people. I got to learn a lot from him and relearn a lot because I dropped off the face of the earth a little bit uh, after my training, starting that master's program. So I forgot a lot. Um, so I, I really benefited from that collaboration. And I think the page benefited from that collaboration too. Um, I will share again to show you the page. I don't know why I stopped sharing. Uh, so the International Certificate of Vaccination Prophylaxis, you might've heard it referred to as a yellow card, is a document, basically a, a booklet um, that you can use as proof of vaccination. So there are a lot of countries that require a yellow fever vaccine for you to enter. And this certificate is what is going to, to show them as you're entering. Um, we thought that this page was really important to work on because as COVID vaccines are coming out, this is a model that might be used. Um, and the really great thing about this, you know, you might hear people now talking about, oh, how are we gonna do this? And, you know, people talking about how it's infringing on their liberties and things like that, but we actually already have the infrastructure to do it. We don't even need anything new because this booklet, while it's primarily used for yellow fever, has spots for all different vaccinations. So we're already ready to go. Um, so we were able to add a lot of information to this page before we got to it. It basically read like a travel blog for Americans who are going abroad. Uh, so we were able to provide more of a global perspective and something else that we found when we were working on the page is that Nigeria is actually coming or has already come out with a digital version 
Uh, so we thought that was something important to add to the page because I wouldn't be surprised if that's coming soon too. And we finished this page about a week and a half ago. And since then, it has had 3,389 views. Um, so we managed to reach 3,389 people in a week and a half, which is more than any other form of activism would get. Um, so the last page that I want to talk about is uh, a page that I just finished a couple of days ago on vaccine information statements. Uh, it's that piece of paper that you're given before you get vaccinated and you probably glance at and then throw away. But it's actually really important. And it started out uh, back in 1974, there was a case where a vaccine manufacturer, the court basically decided that vaccine manufacturers were responsible for informing people about the risks associated with vaccines. Uh, but manufacturers didn't like this because then they were liable if a doctor or a healthcare provider forgot to mention them. Um, so there was a bit of back and forth, and basically what they arrived on was the CDC was going to produce information that healthcare providers had to distribute. Um, so throughout this process, the CDC made these nice, long 14-page documents, but what they found was that people were actually less informed because it was a 14-page document, and nobody's going to read that very thoroughly. Uh, so they decided that it would be more effective if they included less information. And what's great about these is the CDC took a really vaccine positive approach. So while this was primarily a document to cover the asses of vaccine manufacturers, the CDC really makes sure to put the risks into perspective. And they actually start it with a section on why get vaccinated, which is a description about how much it would suck to get the disease that you're being vaccinated against. Um, so I thought that this page was important as the COVID vaccine is coming out, people are looking for more information. And so I just finished that on Wednesday and I think it's already had a hundred something views. So again, I reached a hundred something people in a couple of days, which is something that I wouldn't have been able to do with any other form of activism. And so with that, I hope that some of you will consider joining us. Next up, you'll get to hear Monica talk about some of the more fun pages that she's worked on. Uh, she got to work on some of the more interesting uh, woo and pseudoscience topics. And I, again, I really hope you'll join us because we really need to make sure that people have good information during this world of fake news. I'm happy to answer any questions. That was great. Terrific job. Woo <laughs> Very proud. That was wonderful. I'm so glad that you were able to do this. Thank you for doing that for us, Kelly, because I really literally talked to you and Monica into doing this. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. Susan basically messaged me and was like, you want to talk? And I'm like, I am not qualified to talk. I'm like, and you are more than qualified to talk, girl. She's so funny. And Monica said the same thing. She says, I can't do this. I'm like, oh, how many hundreds of thousands of page views do you need before you can start talking, Monica? Well, it wasn't hundreds, but tens of thousands of page views. I, I'm like, Monica, you are more than qualified and you are too, Kelly, especially about the training process. You just went through it and it's all made up. I just made it up out of the blue. So it's great. I'm glad. <laughs> but everybody should know I made it up because I didn't get a chance to go through training myself. There is no Wikipedia training in general. If you're not, a, if you just want to be a Wikipedia editor, there's no real training, right? Yeah. And Wikipedia is intimidating if you don't have that somebody to introduce you to it. I nearly got banned and thrown off several times when I was trying to join this, trying to do this myself. So I, so I just kind of made up. And after I go through, the, after I wrote the training, all the new editors went through and cleaned up, you know, they said, you know, this was a little confusing for me. And they, and they adjusted the training. So the training has been vetted by a bunch of people. It's not just me writing it and then it's there. So, um, terrific. Okay. So a few questions we're getting, has anybody vandalized your edits yet? Not that I know of. Um, I I've kept an eye out and I don't think so, but there's still time. <laughs> You'll get to hear a little bit more about that with Monica. She's had a lot more experience with that. So. <laughs> Rob Basically. said you joined. He said you did such a good job. He'd join if you were, if he wasn't already on the team. <laughs> <laughs> you convinced him. I love how you did the, uh, the Google um, 
knowledge panel when you asked if somebody would just mention a uh, page and you did yeah. it, it popped right up it wasn't like you had a pre pre-picked out that you would decide which one it was going to be yeah i had a backup in case it didn't work but <laughs> what are you working on next that's a great question no pressure no pressure besides this talk now, suggestion. somebody can maybe make a good suggestion out here so that would be really good. And yeah, uh, Tim Farley was the person who introduced me to the idea. Um, Tim Farley, who had the website, uh, What's the Harm? I heard him on a JREF cruise. We're all connected somehow, I guess, to JREF, uh, to James Randi in some in some way, and uh, to uh, Center for Inquiry. And uh, his idea was, everybody should start editing Wikipedia. It's a really good idea to do that. And I'm, I'm like, oh shit. So I, it was it was a real hurdle. Okay, anything else? Let's see. Uh, any other questions for people? Quickly ask real quick before we have here. So Kelly has, um, you've written a total of, oh, I was looking really quick. You're at 103 views for that new page. I tell you what, that was amazing. That information a sheet that you put out, just that was, I was like, oh my gosh, there's a history behind this page. There's a reason why it is the way it is. In case you want to read about the really boring sheet that you probably didn't read. <laughs> I'm going to be reading that thing, let me tell you. Um, you are, yeah, you just barely started uh, writing stuff. You're already at 1,231 page views. And that's as of yesterday. So today hasn't updated. So I hope everybody's going to be in there writing, um, reading these pages that you've done. I'm trying to quickly look at the different things. Yeah, the best part of uh, Janice is the best part of uh, GSW is helping each other out. Um, I, uh, my internet is a little bit slow, you guys. I see Deborah asked about the master's program. Oh yeah, the master's program at Center for Inquiry. So um, it's a really cool program. I've only taken one class so far, so I can't speak too much about it, um, but the program is science in the public and it's kind of a combination of science communication and science education. Um, so. The class I just took was society and technological change, kind of talking about how people react to technological change and how new technologies are adopted. Um, there are classes in critical thinking and informal science communication, um, science history, and a bunch of other stuff that I haven't signed up for yet. Um, but uh, I'll keep you updated, but it, it's been a really cool program so far. We have another one of our GSOW editors who just finished uh, their master's, I believe in it. and. Um, I've heard wonderful things about it. Okay, so here's something from Leonard. He says, is there any other organization that provides Wikipedia training that you know of? That would probably be a better question for you because I have no idea. I don't think so. I mean, there's that little like tutorial game that they have on Wikipedia that was like the pre-training assignment, mm -hmm. but um, it, it didn't hold a candle to GSOW training. <laughs> I also think that there isn't... Um, anything that deals with uh, focusing on multiple languages. I think we're one of the only actual projects out there that really focuses on non just, you know, not just English. We're trying really hard to get our training translated into other languages, but we're having a lot of trouble. Um, Leon says Wikipedia is a way to reach thousands of people with a personal blog. You never get so much traffic. Um, and I saw one. Oh, uh, Linda Rosa says, there seems to be a lot of trash talk about Wikipedia among pseudoscience groups and right-wingers claim it has been taken over. Yeah, well, and then on top of that, there's like the middle school teachers telling you Wikipedia is not reliable because anyone could edit it. But in reality, you have so many people with eyes on it and editing it that any bad information is going to be gone pretty quickly. Yeah, they're using it anyway, so I figured that we should just fix it anyway. Um, you're absolutely right. I think that's an outdated thing that, that they say. Um, Wikipedia is a great place to start and to go down to the bottom and get your citations. Um, Avi says, does the Wikipedia admins know about us? They do, I believe, if I remember from what I've read in my training months ago. Mm -hmm. Lots of people, lots of them do. They support us. I get messages from the admin, uh, different administrators that are skeptic related, you know, focused on some of the pages we are. They've heard about us. They backed us up in many different cases. Um, I know the pseudoscience uh, world has been kind of anti-GSOW 
anti-Susan Gerbeg, anti-Gorilla skeptics for a long time. They keep getting upset and frustrated and throwing themselves off saying they're going to start at their own Wikipedia. <laughs> Go for it. Have a great time. <laughs> Rob says, tell everybody what Deepak Chopra thinks of us. What is it he thinks of us? Not, not highly. <laughs> He's not well, that that you run the whole entire Wikipedia no, organization to the detriment of reality. David Gorski runs GSOW, and I and between us we run all of Wikipedia. Of course, yeah. Oh. Um, Leon says Dutch Wikipedia has a special user group for gender related and women related peoples, which is good for new female editors. Gender gap, op nl.wikipedia.org. Uh, Deborah's put a link to the Center for Inquiry programs. Um, Craig Sachs says Wikipedia is what we make of it. GSOW does a great task of that exact, actually. What happened to that uh, conservopedia that Phyllis yeah. Sheffield's daughter, son started? Is it still around? Yeah, I think so. I've never, I haven't really visited it. And uh, is the more people who want to go over there and edit it, the better. It, it, it <laughs> I'll tell you, wacky site. I mean, you should check it out. It used to be. I haven't checked it out for years, but it was crazy. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So, okay. So, Kelly, thank you so much. That was fantastic. We're right on time. I don't know how that happened, but thank you again. I appreciate it. I'm so glad to have you uh, come and do a talk for us. Thank you for, for bending to my will. <laughs> doing a talk. No, I'm only kidding. Of course you could have said no. <laughs> yeah, of course I could Resistance have. is futile. <laughs> resistance is detail. All right. Thank you so much, Kelly. I really appreciate it. So check out the links, you guys, in the in the chat. There's all sorts of different things in there. I'm getting pretty where I can so far I haven't hung up on everybody. I'm doing I'm doing okay. <laughs> so far. So far so okay. good. All right. So I said, we're going to have a second talk about it from a GSOW editor. This one is a little bit, uh, Monica is a little, has a little more experience. I think she's been with me a couple of years, but she'll, she'll fill you in on this. Um, she's going to give you more of a talk in the world as an experienced GSOW editor. And I talked her into giving this talk because I think it's real important that people hear all the different stories about what you can do if you want to help, um, but you just don't really know what you should do. And as uh, Kelly explained, you can find time for this if you, you know, uh, there's ways of, of finding the time to do this. And I've trained many and experienced GS, uh, I've, I've trained many and uh, editors on the team, but Monica is one of these people in the group that I call a honey badger. And if you don't know what that is, you'll have to look it up. But I have a few people in our team that are more willing or have gotten into uh, Wikipedia pages that are more controversial. They're more likely to have uh, pushback um, of sorts. They're, they're more controversial. Like if you're writing a Wikipedia page about a book or a movie or something, not necessarily you're going to get a lot of conflict. We have very, very little conflict with uh, people uh, removing our edits. We have very little uh, prob little issue with that. It's, it's like one of the most asked questions I get, and we have so little of it. Um, and it's because the way they're trained is to write it fully and completely and to write it in your user space and then paste it in instead of trying to make little edits here and there as you go. And then people uh, find it easier to delete little bits as you go. So Monica is going to explain that a little bit more. She is, um, uh, we'll talk about some of the work that she's done. My team is starting to move more towards being honey badgers now that we're into this phase where we're trying to work on more vaccine related pages. So um, I'm going to let Mo Monica fill you all in on that. So Monica, I will find you on my little gallery screen. Where are you, Monica? There she is. Oh, there she is. Oh my gosh. It's so good to see you. I haven't seen you in person in so long. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Thank you so Hi. much for doing this talk. This is going to be a lot of fun. I'll be right here. Um, are you, you're going to share your screen, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So let me mute myself and let me take myself off the spotlight and it's all yours, but I'm right here. 
All right, cool. Well, thank you so much. And uh, thank you everyone in advance for your time. And also thank you to everyone who's spoken before me. It's been delightful to listen to you all. Like I always tell Susan, I could listen to Janice talk about facilitated communication for hours. And in fact, I, I love to listen to their YouTube channel, <laughs> uh, their interviews on the YouTube channel. So anyway, um, my name's Monica. And in case you haven't heard enough about Wikipedia, uh, I'm going to talk about my experience with guerrilla skeptics on Wikipedia, and I'll go over a little bit what um, led me into skepticism in the first place and thus joining the group, as well as some of the work I've done so far, like what Susan calls the honey badger type of things and why I find it meaningful. So um, I joined the guerrilla skeptics a little over two years ago in October of 2018, and I really fell into skepticism unintentionally, but it was very much necessary for my life at the time. In 2016, two years prior to me joining uh, GSOW, I had my first child and I left my full-time job in mid-level management and became a stay-at-home mom. And that's a big change for most people. And you know, my, my child was pretty difficult. And I experienced the social isolation and lack of fulfillment that many new full-time caregivers face. So um, I tried to be the best mom I could. I fully immersed myself in the mom world. I went to all the mommy and me courses offered by the local community college. I went to all the story times at all the libraries. I went to swim lessons. I went to parks. I joined... Um, several mom groups on Facebook that were meant for support and advice. And that's where things started really standing out to me. In those settings, I found many parents just like myself. These parents shared stories of struggles and successes, but they also offered solutions derived from their own experiences. Um, so I was bombarded with opinions and suggestions on every topic related to parenting. Uh, people suggested amber necklaces that would help with pain and teething, um, homeopathic tablets that you put on your kid's tongue to help with teething, essential oils for sleep, uh, chiropractic care for colic, um, co-sleeping versus the cried out method, and lots of um, alternative vaccination schedule ideas. Uh, there was so much contradictory advice, but it was all supported by very passionate anecdotes. And that got to be, you know, a little confusing. So as my child neared a year of age, I found myself settling more into a routine and coming up with a little more time on my hands to start to look into some of these claims. So the two things that interested me most at first was chiropractic and also the amber necklaces because I had worked as a swim instructor for years and I saw so many kids that would come to swim lessons and they had these these amber necklaces on and the parents would always say it's the best thing and I just assumed it was legit because everyone did it. Um, so I looked into those two things and I was shocked to find that there was actually no convincing evidence behind these practices. Um, so I found myself starting to offer advice in these mom groups. I started trying to remind people that sometimes the hardest thing is to do nothing at all. Sometimes babies are just cranky and it may feel good for us to offer them belly rubs by chiropractors or essential oils on their feet for bedtime. But ultimately that just makes us feel like we're doing something, anything but for me, upon doing the research, I realized that that feeling of doing something was not worth the associated risks that came with these alternative practices. So I started listening to podcasts. I Googled skeptical podcasts and found a list on Wikipedia. And I began listening through the back catalog of several of these, like Skeptics with a K and The Reality Check. And uh, during that process, I found an old interview with Susan Gerbic explaining the Guerrilla Skeptics Project. And when I listened to it, the interview was probably three or four years old, I think. But I was like, well, I'm sure they're still doing it. Who knows? I'll just send her an email anyway. And uh, that's how I ended up here. So as a stay-at-home parent with 
little to no freedom. It was really hard to feel like I was making a difference in anyone's life except for my child's. I found the idea of disseminating useful science-based information to be very appealing. I don't have a large social media platform myself. I'm not, you know, valuable in that way alone, but by creating and editing Wikipedia pages, I saw an opportunity to do something more real. So I immediately dove into the training process that Kelly just described. And for me, I, I rushed through it really quickly. And I started with, um, with my first page from the rewrite list on Hay House, which is a publishing company that focuses on new age and spirituality. So I'm going to throw up a couple screenshots here just for, just for fun. Um, so first here you see on um, Hay House, if you look at, let me move this so I can see what I'm looking at. You see they have bestsellers that include such titles as Intimate Conversations with the Divine and the Angel Guide Oracle and such products as the Mediumship Training Deck. In their um, popular online courses here, you can see that you can learn how to awaken the witch within or become a certified angel guide. Um, so those are some interesting things I didn't know you could you could learn online. Um, and this is surprisingly to me no small company. Um, as I wrote the Wikipedia on the Wikipedia page, I wrote as of 2018, Hay House reports that they publish books by more than 130 authors and sell their products and services in over 35 countries, and that they employ over 100 full time staff members. Um, I rewrote the page so that anyone looking to learn more about the company can see the links to pseudoscience and to the paranormal and thus be linked to other Wikipedia pages that share the scientific truth about these ideas. Uh, Hay House even admits that they do not test the claims made by their authors. The authors um, gain merit with the publisher just based on testimonials from their customers rather than the credibility or accuracy of their claims. Um, so springboarding off from that, I did this rewrite and then I was in the secret cabal and I saw people asking about um, if anyone had written a page for this particular person. And I thought, okay, I think I can take that on. And thus I began the process of creating probably my most interesting page for someone who is an author with Hay House. Um, and that's Anthony William. And he's a unique guy. Um, he believes that he has a, a psychic connection with a spirit, which gives him the ability to diagnose and heal medical conditions. He calls himself the medical medium. Uh, he's written several popular books that have to do with healing illness through diet. He is the self-proclaimed originator of the celery juice diet, and he believes that the Epstein-Barr virus is responsible for um, most ailments such as cancer, and he prescribes B12 vitamins as treatment. Uh, surprisingly, he's also been accused of practicing medicine without a license. So let me pull up a, a little screenshot again. So here, if you go to his website and you want to look at the about section, you see that we are met with a pop-up ad for a free digital download that offers advice on how to protect yourself from viruses, which is very timely. And I think we can likely all guess that his opinions on the current pandemic are a little less than scientific. So I don't know about you, but I'm not going to bother downloading that book. Um, uh, so in this uh, underneath what I just showed you, the about page goes on to describe his unique ability to converse with what he calls the spirit of compassion, uh, which they claim provides him with health information that is ahead of its time. Um, he claims that the spirit he talks to is actually like an angel from the future. So his medical advice is futuristic, allegedly. Um, his about section concludes with the claim that he has become an invaluable resource to doctors who need help solving their most difficult cases, which is truly just ridiculous as much as it is upsetting. Um, Personally, I never found any evidence of real doctors uh, thanking him for cracking the case, but 
maybe there's um, some quacks out there who think that his futuristic angel is um, helping them out. Um, so like what, what Kelly mentioned that I've had, this was, this was the most, um, you know, contentious page I wrote. So I, the, this page had an interesting reaction when it was published. Um, when I published the page, um, almost immediately there were attempts made to edit it. Um, an anonymous editor uh, tried to revert it, claiming in the edit notes that the cited sources are almost completely libelous, actual, absolute factual misstatements. Citing libelous material is not only by definition grounds for legal action, but also against Wikipedia's policies, gross inaccuracies and in libel. Um, so uh, immediately someone saw the page and c tried to claim that the whole thing was libel and delete it. Um, and then suddenly someone created an account that has now been blocked from Wikipedia. And it, it, this just, this was funny to me because I'm just gonna um, show a screenshot of this because I think it's a little funny. The account, um, the account name you, you can see in red there was the the truth in all caps can set you free. So someone who felt that they came in here to really um, share the truth, um, they went on to say in the notes things like what a crock typical Wikipedia disinformation campaign nonsense. So I'm sure whoever this was is um, one of the people like Susan mentioned who thinks that there's some secret group of uh, people running Wikipedia intentionally to mislead, um, to mislead us. And, you know, at the time, uh, Susan and I discussed it, and I, I, I bet a lot of you would agree, it seems very likely that it was Anthony William himself who was trying to um, vandalize this page. Um, but the beauty of Wikipedia is that, of course, it has a strict rule on notability of information. And thus, you know, you can delete things that are not notable, but then the reverse of that is when you have a well-written page and you have notable valid sources, someone can't just delete it because they want to. Um, and also other editors, you know, this was like the second page I ever wrote and other, I didn't know what I was doing. I still don't know what I'm doing. And other editors um, immediately took up defense of the page and reverted his attempts to change or remove the page and its sources. Um, so I'm pretty proud to say that the page, which remains today, is very close to how I um, wrote it in March of 2019. Uh, if you were to Google him at the time I said about writing this page, only his own website and promotional material would um, appear. But now, like what Kelly talked about, it's a, there's a nice sidebar there. And you know, if you Google it on your phone, you see the little blurb of Wikipedia before you can scroll down to his own page. So that's a big change for his, um, for his Google search results. And um, to date, that page has been viewed over 300,000 times. So um, that's pretty cool to me because there's no other um, means by which, you know, a stay-at-home mom like me might reach 300,000 um, pairs of eyes. Uh, no amount of commenting in mom groups or talking to other parents at the park could ever add up to this kind of information sharing. And uh, that's really mind blowing to me. Um, so now anyone who Googles him after seeing one of his articles on Goop or hearing about his books to like cleanse your liver through celery juice or something like that, they'll be met with a concise factual description of his beliefs and controversies along with all the relevant citations to reputable news and science outlets. And so hopefully that's, helped people to reconsider following his advice. Um, and then I just decided to talk about this briefly because I knew uh, it ended up having a fun connection to Kelly, but about a year ago, I wrote a page for the movie, uh, We Believe in Dinosaurs. Um, and I've never seen the movie myself, but what's so cool about Wikipedia is that that doesn't even matter. The page has to be created by blending together secondary source material anyway. So my opinion is just not needed. I don't even have to watch the movie to write a page for it. Um, and according to the directors of the movie, the um, goal of the film is to spark an important dialogue about the thorny intersection of belief, religion, and science um, crossing into the cultural bubbles where so many Americans seem to exist. 
Um, and the movie follows the construction of the Ark Encounter, which is meant to be a replica of Noah's Ark, which contains a museum full of creationist propaganda and hypotheses. Um, and the movie follows the building through the process of different people like the creationist head designer, a reformed creationist who wants religion and science to kind of coexist and um, a geologist who's trying to convince, um, convince people that this is just a ridiculous idea. Um, and the movie got some mixed reviews with some critics feeling it was disjointed, but that none of that really matters. And it's still important for it to have a Wikipedia page because regardless of the movie itself and how good it was, and if I even watched it before making the page, what's so cool is that Wikipedia can then serve as a springboard for those Wikipedia rabbit holes that colloquially so many people speak about. Um, because this page, um, as silly as it is for this movie, um, it links to the pages for the Ark Encounter Museum itself, for Young Earth Creationism, for the page on evolution, the Genesis flood narrative, Answers in Genesis, Biblical literalism, and creationism. Those are all links that you will find in this page on regarding this movie. So, you know, you may somebody may have just seen this movie online and wanted to watch it, but then when they when they look at the Wikipedia page, they're met with links to very real and very scientific information, um, which I just think is really cool. Um, another interesting page I had a hand in was that of Pentawater. Let me um, let me pull that up here and see. So Pentawater, as you can see here, is some kind of magical water that goes for like $1.50 for a 500 milliliter bottle. So I just thought I'd show that here that it's obviously anything that's magical has to be pretty expensive. Um, and um, the founder of this water company claimed that the formula saved his life. It's some kind of... Uh, very secret but patented water filtration process. I couldn't find anything really about the process because they keep it very secret since it's magic, you know? So um, he claimed, the creator of this company claimed that, um, yeah, the water saved his life and he claimed he has thousands of testimonials from people with conditions such as cancer, arthritis, cirrhosis, heart disease, and my favorite teenage acne, um, who claimed to receive relief from his purified water because it allegedly reduces swelling. Um, and in a 2004 interview, he said, our water protects DNA. It acts as a sort of anti-aging process. Heck, it may even be the fountain of youth. Um, so this page was on the re rewrite list for the group and I rewrote it in um, May of 2019. Uh, when I came to the page, it had like three citations, but they were just like links to the website and they weren't very uh, strong and the information on the page wasn't even, you know, linked to the sources. Um, today, there's 10 strong sources and it's appropriately cited throughout. Um, and most importantly, a large section on criticism remains. So anyone who visits the page can now see their long struggle with being accused of misleading and false advertising. So um, I'm gonna, gonna show this section again, cause it's, um, so here, like there's, you see it goes off the, the screenshot I took here. There's a huge section on criticism and challenge that I was able to create here. Um, their claims have actually been so outlandish that they were encouraged to attempt James Randi's million dollar challenge and um, oh, regarding their claim that seeds could germinate in half the time in Penta water compared to, you know, normal water. Uh, they accepted the challenge actually, but they ultimately declined to continue because they claimed they didn't currently have the resources to provide someone to appropriately oversee the experiment. Um, at the time. So unfortunately, we never got to see um, them attempt that million dollar challenge. Um, you know, I had never heard of Penta Water, but it was on the page of, um, it was on the list of pages that needed rewriting. And surprisingly to me, since I've rewritten the page, it's been viewed almost 18,000 times. So 
you know, not super remarkable, but apparently it's still something that people occasionally um, uh, look into. So um, going on to the last page I'm going to talk about, this was my uh, one of the more, the, I think this was the most recent page that I, I fully wrote. Um, uh, back in August was uh, a page I did for something called the Webster Technique, uh, which is a chiropractic practice that's meant to flip babies out of the breech position. Uh, this is a topic that's really particularly um, important to me because I care about parent issues and pregnant people and parents are very likely to be sucked into pseudoscience if there's any small chance it'll help their children. And um, like I said, I was most interested in chiropractic in the beginning, and that's because I myself was actually convinced to take my firstborn daughter when she was only two months old. I was convinced to take her to a chiropractor to try and help with some of her issues. And I, that, the, the way that I felt so wrong about that was what led me to... Um, to get it, to get involved with skepticism because I was like this just this doesn't feel right and that's when I started researching chiropractic and started coming into these skeptical sources but so anyway this page on the Webster technique um, has only been viewed like 450 times but I just like to know that people are nobody's going to google this technique if it hasn't been um been recommended to them. People who are searching this, it's so obscure. These are probably people who went to a chiropractor or had a friend say, oh, your baby's breech. Why don't you try this Webster technique? Um, and on the page, they're met with um, information here. Let me share a little bit of the page I took a screenshot of here. Um, you can see I made a section on regulations here on the Webster technique, and um, there are a couple groups that legislate against um, the practice, like in Australia and New Zealand, their medical boards disallow it, and uh, interestingly, British Columbia's chiropractic organization discourages, well, actually di disallows um, members from saying that they um, that they can flip babies by using this technique. And the technique also, I just, it was kind of interesting because it was created by a particular person who was, who like certifies people in it. Like they actually offer classes. It's apparently a very specific, you know, of course, kind of magical thing that you do to flip a baby. And uh, I read there were like three studies done on it. Unfortunately, the the abstract of the studies did not stick on the page since it's not a secondary source and I couldn't find enough material uh, describing the studies secondarily, but um, not surprisingly, the outcomes of the studies were that it didn't make any difference. And in fact, one woman um, had very negative side effects from um, uh, attempting to, um, to do this technique to flip her baby. Um, and yes, Susan, you said the, the Australian skeptic backwards edit in that page. That was how I came to this page. I think it was the Australian skeptics group that was asking about this because it was in one of their latest um, magazines. And that's how I came to write the page. Um, so you may notice a theme that runs through most of these pages I mentioned um, that I work on. In, in my opinion, they're all really um, fun or weird. I, I really like looking into more obscure or controversial or unusual topics. Um, and I love it so much because they can end up, like I said previously, linking back to more important things. Um, even a page for something seemingly silly, if done right, can get someone um, thinking and going down that that Wikipedia rabbit hole that leads um, hopefully deeper into science instead of like when you go down a YouTube rabbit hole and you, you might end up deeper into something crazy. Um, this should, Wikipedia should help us get deeper into science. Um, I do feel woefully unqualified to talk about Wikipedia because uh, through this team, I've met so many people who do amazing work that is so far reaching and uh, like Susan said in the chat, in fact, it was one of the GSOW editors who created the Wikipedia list of skeptical podcasts back in 2014, which um, ultimately led me to join this group as I listened through the content on that very list. Um, 
It was Leon, yes. Um, I often feel overwhelmed by a desire to contribute to the world of skepticism and to fight back against pseudoscience. And I really think there's no better way to get involved than to get in here and edit. And, you know, I encourage my mom and sister to join. And I, I think I've almost convinced my sister. Um, it's very satisfying and it really makes a difference. And it's fun. Um, there's just so much bad information out in the world that's easy to reach. And uh, Wikipedia can help us change that first search result. So thanks. Terrific, 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 terrific. I scored getting you two in here. I tell you what. <laughs> I'm very, I'm proud of myself that I managed to talk you guys into doing this. That was great. <laughs> I will, I will, I will, I will be more than proud. I'm so happy that you guys are representing us and terrific work, Monica. Terrific. Just terrific. I, <laughs> I, uh, Monica didn't give all the facts in some of the things. So I'm going to read uh, that Monica has written eight Wikipedia pages and those eight Wikipedia pages as of this moment have been viewed 398,491 times. So when she's saying, Oh, I don't think I would have had a lot of influence in the world before. I think I think she's found her niche because look at that. 398,000 people are reading her stuff. Rob Palmer put up, and he's, he's often talking about, if you write a book, in the lifetime of the book, you might get maybe 3,000 3, views of your book, purchases your book. But look at how much work you get out of writing a Wikipedia page and you're influencing people. Another point I wanted to put up is, uh, as Monica was talking about this, I thought, we're not here to really change the minds. We're not going to turn anti-vaxxers into pro-vaxxers. We're not going to um, take people to renounce their, their chiropractor necessarily. That's not the goal. The goal is to get to those people before they get to, um, they have, you know, fallen into the belief system so much because it's so hard to get them out of it. Again, I'm going to use the word inoculate if we can inoculate people before they come to the belief, the strong belief, then they're more likely to uh, just kind of move away. They'll say, oh, teething rings don't work. Oh, okay. And then they they try something else or they'll, you know, do something else. Here we go. Let's see. What do we have here in the chat? Craig says, GSOW is like an upside down pyramid scheme. <laughs> Susan on the bottom, supporting the team and helping holding us up. Oh, that's funny. Uh, we all add something a little bit. People on the fence are best audience for skeptical activism. What else you guys got to say out there? You got some questions for Monica? Let's see what they have to say. <laughs> Monica, can you talk really quick about every well? I'm saying. Oh, yeah, that was my my lots of effort but completely failed attempt <laughs> to make a page um there was a there's a company that i kept seeing advertisements for called everly well um and it seems very theranos-esque um it claims that you do these blood samples you send at home blood samples and then they they give you allergy test results but what was really interesting is that it's like igg test results as opposed to like i some other letter G that was very similar. That's what like an allergist would um, would actually do. And what's interesting about the IgG testing is it tests for like a reaction in your body such that like if you haven't eaten that food in, basically the test results just tell you if you've eaten that food recently or not. It doesn't really tell you your sensitivities, but it's touted as a sensitivity testing. Um, and um, my own sister was like, hey, have you heard of this? I'm allergic to a lot of things. I said, that's so funny because I was just trying to write a page on it. And I tried to write a page on it, but unfortunately the page I wrote got taken down claiming that it was, um, you know, not enough sources, but I did attempt to publish that page twice, I think. And I've still got it saved in case um, in the future I can try once again if there's some more um, sources. I thought the sources were pretty good, but for some reason that page just won't stick. And I did put a lot of work into it. They they claim to have testing that can like um, tell you like, like risks for like heart disease, all kinds of stuff that really you shouldn't be getting from an at-home kit. 
I think that uh, if I remember correctly, is that the company attempted to write the Wikipedia page for themselves. Yeah. yeah. And what happened is the Wikipedia admins that, you know, are kind of around Wikipedia said, oh no, you can't write that Wikipedia page for yourself. This is just advertisement. And they deleted it. And then I think they tried again and they deleted it. And then Monica, a skeptic, tries to write the page from the skeptical point of view, a science point of view. And they're like, oh, wait a second here. What's going on? Are you working for this company or something? Didn't really, I don't think they really looked at what you were writing. Yeah. So it's yeah, and you're right. Whenever, the, whenever a topic is kind of banned, you're not allowed to write a page for this because it's salted, salting the earth. Yeah. I think that's kind of more or less what happened. But the page is there and you learned a lot writing it and I learned a lot and I think a lot of the other editors in the team learned a lot from what you're doing so here's a couple other questions let me scroll up here uh, uh Avi wants to know if your kids have started training in DSOW yet <laughs> <laughs> they're still a little young only four and one so they, they don't even know how to read yet we'll get them there eventually we'll get there, we'll get there. I mean we need to have everybody out there start working on their babies and getting them let's get them going now um, Craig uh, Foster was talking earlier about his daughter, and I think that uh, she was watching this with him. And uh, I think it's important that uh, we get those kids while they're young. Um, Mike dersulik has got his daughter maybe still there too. Hopefully she's watching. She's what, four months. Um, how do you, Jenna says, how do you know which sources are reliable? Oh. Especially dealing with a place like something like, you know, somebody. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, especially, and that's what's so hard when, like, I'm, you know, when you're trying to write a page on something that's kind of like a pseudoscientific topic, because like, if I'm writing about Anthony William, I'm not going to use anything from his own website. I'm not going to use anything from Goop. You have to find like news sources that are reputable news companies, not press releases. So I always just search through the Google news feature and start there. And that's where I usually have the most luck with finding, um, reliable sources. And then once I find a source and I read it and go, oh, this is good information. Then I go to Wikipedia and I search the author of the article and I search the the page that published the article and make sure that they're notable on Wikipedia. And then once you see that the author or the uh, page itself is notable enough to have had its own Wikipedia page or to be cited elsewhere on Wikipedia, because when you search that, you can see it if it pulls up as a citation on other pages, then I'm like, okay, I'm pretty confident that this is um, reputable. Um, but yeah, always just avoiding anything where you might be pulling information from um, like a, like the origin, the primary source of like a page someone wrote for themselves. Um, Stuart said um, he wanted to ask, do Wikipedia editors, or I should say, do you Wikipedia editors, which meaning GSOW, because we're not, we're like the SWAT team of, of, of Wikipedia editors. I mean, we're, we're just Wikipedia editors too, but we just have a lot of training. We have, a, we have mentorship. We have a secret cabal. So we're like Wikipedia editors on steroids, kind of like, in a way. He wants to know if we ever get into fights on talk pages with other editors. Yeah, I mean, you know, personally, I don't, but I can say, I, I don't know what I'm doing and I'm not very aggressive. So I avoid, I avoid those kind of things. I don't even know how to create a talk page on my own article. Someone else always does that for me. So, yeah. um, <laughs> super easy. <laughs> Co I copy from another page. It's done well, paste it onto ours. And that's it. Really simple. You, uh, we don't, um, to answer your question, Stuart, Typically, we do not get into arguments with people on on, uh, on talk pages or anywhere else in Wikipedia editing because the way I train them is to uh, back away. Um, usually, if there are people who are trying to edit the page, they're usually gone like a troll. They come in, they edit, they make their vandalism, then they go away. Um, most Wikipedia editors are skeptics even if they don't have anything to do with GSOW, most of them, because the rules of uh, Wikipedia are all skepticism, the rules of skepticism. You have to prove your case. You have to have a great source for it and so on. So for the most place, we can walk away and regular Wikipedia editors and Wikipedia admins come in and usually defend most of the work we've done. So we don't get involved with most of the talks. I tell people, this isn't the hill to die on. Um, move on. You've got more important things to do. And we usually just walk away and it gets resolved, and in, and in the meantime, I don't want my blood. I don't want my team's blood pressure going up. I don't want anybody getting upset and quitting. I don't think there's any reason they need to spend, you know, ten hours on 
making sure that the wording they had was exact because once the page is live we don't have any we have very little control over it anymore monica you have any thoughts no <laughs> well, you haven't been in a lot of uh fights with people on wikipedia talk pages because yeah you have no business doing that you got other stuff to do let somebody else do it <laughs> somebody who wants yes. to spend the day on that um Leon asked about MLMs. I know that you're you're very interested in multi-level marketing. Uh, oh yeah. yeah, that made me laugh when someone says it's like you're an upside down pyramid scheme because I'm like, <laughs> it's not a pyramid scheme because um, yeah, it's uh, my other kind my of <laughs> my uh, my other kind of skepticism related thing I do is I help moderate a really big Facebook group that's um, against multi-level marketing companies and multi-level marketing companies are a great. Um, intersection of they tend to use uh, like religious abuse. They 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 pick people who are in religions and they prey on people who have kind of religious connections. And they also tend to sell pseudo scientific products like magical weight loss cures. And um, you know, I did actually start working on some multi level marketing company pages, but they are insanely frustrating to write about. And it's actually a, an interesting. Thing to look into and i know another editor worked on the arbon page which is a massive um mlm but what 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 stumps me most of the time because most of these companies don't have pages because the way that they are all you can find on them is their own website and press releases they're they're not getting coverage these companies don't get skeptical coverage at least not individually so but um i have tried to update like the list of uh, multi-level marketing companies on wikipedia because um the group I help moderate, uh, the admin team, we keep a group of um, of all the MLM companies past and present that we know. But unfortunately, notability wise, the list the list on Wikipedia has like a few dozen companies because they have to be notable enough to have pages. And our list in, inside our Facebook group has just hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of companies. Um, so yeah, I would like to do more with multi-level marketing companies, but it's just tricky the way the rules of Wikipedia are to get that, um, that notability for these, these schemes. Absolutely. It's like power band uh, bracelets or whatever. They just change names. There's a new name and we can't write a Wikipedia page. So we just have to go with the base, you know, making sure the Wikipedia page for multi-level marketing is in great shape. I'm going to, we have a few more minutes. I'm going to bring, uh, Kelly right over here real quick. I don't know if she knows that she knows <laughs> right there. Um, and I just wanted to mention really quick, terrific job, you guys, terrific job. Um, so I think that, uh, Kelly did a terrific job explaining backwards editing and, um, how important that is. It's a great way of getting information onto a page quickly. And we're, I think of GSOW as like an ecosystem we're doing, there's so much work for us to do. There's a ton of work to be done, but I also think that. We can't do what we're doing unless there are people out there like Stuart Vise and so on to who, and Rob Palmer doing the interviews and, and so on, who are creating the content that we can use on the Wikipedia pages. We've often written to, you know, different people and said, hey, look, we're trying to write a Wikipedia page about X, Y, Z, but there's no skeptical content. So we don't want to write the Wikipedia page until we have good skeptical content to put on it. So could you write a Wikipedia page in this? Harriet Hall's done that for us several times. And uh, I think David Gorski has, um, Steve Novella, Craig Foster, Stuart, you know, different people have done that. And I think that uh, these magazines, we have a project on the GSOW, uh, in the Secret Cabal run by David Powell, one of the editors. And what we're doing is we're trying to go through every single issue and we're going through page by page. And we're, we have a spreadsheet. We're keeping track of everything that we've done. We'll go through and we'll say, okay, where are we going to find a place to put this on Wikipedia? All right, page done. All right, next page. Where are we going to put, you know, how are we going to put a mention of all these fellows on here? And we go through all the issues and it's really time consuming, you guys, but it's so rewarding because when you're doing a backwards edit, you're starting with something you don't, you wouldn't have normally have um, uh thought of editing like uh, I've just pulled this out right here and this is some guy I don't know so if he has a Wikipedia page then I would try to find a way of getting this article onto that Wikipedia page which would give David Marks who wrote this article uh, um, a little boost in, in views you guys have thoughts we got and something that I haven't, 
Well, Susan, yeah, but my plan, um, once I am going you know, back to work and the master's classes are starting back up and I suddenly have no time left, um, my plan was to go through all the back issues of National Geographic that I have just sitting there that I haven't read yet. And I can kill two birds with one stone, get to finally read those and use them for <laughs> Oh, I know. I used to get those magazines and they just pile up and I'd feel so awful because, you know, you paid for it and you want to look at them and you just feel so, I'm not getting through these things. <laughs> that's absolutely right. So you have to start with a magazine or a website or something that's already considered reliable. Like the way I, I explain it is they have to have journalistic integrity. You have to, if they make a mistake, are they willing to go and uh, re fix the mistake or whatever? No other comments? <laughs> you had two minutes. Go girls. I mean, they do this on TV. You'll see this per the person in 30 seconds. Can you explain blah, blah, blah? And they're like, they do it somehow. I don't know. I think they practice doing things in 30 second intervals. Well, I'm impressed how on time you've stayed with this all, Susan. You're perfect. Your timing is impeccable. <laughs> I, I um, sacrificed a, a goat earlier. <laughs> Yeah, I no, I built in a little bit and um, I don't know how I did that, but so far so good. Okay, so we're gonna, thank you guys again. Thank you, I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you, Susan. I appreciate it. Okay, I'm gonna remove your spotlight so you can.